So, all of these pieces have been through the Sonic Cleaner with just soapy water to help blast the goo off of them. And then I dried them thoroughly, but some of this is flash rusted, which is expected and okay. Uh, it would be nice if it hadn't happened, but you know. That is how metal works, so. Just. Get this in. Put our dabs of sewing machine oil on it as we go. So, we'll set the tensioner stuff apart, and I'm going to start by. Rubbing a little oil all over the outside of the bobbin case here. And it goes like that, and the this piece that holds it in also needs a little oil rubbed on it to get back into that finish and help protect that. say when this came out it popped in there pretty stiff there's the slot it goes in okay so There. Okay. So this spring holder here needs to get slid in at an angle so that it holds in place and then it pops the bobbin case under it. And then we'll rub a little oil into the underside of our plate here. And we'll lift our switch up to the darning section and that should oh wait rotate that for the feed dogs to be low and then this should slip in there yep all right and we rotate that to be into the pins and then the it clamps back in place perfect rub a bit of oil over the back side of this uh, because it's been so washed so thoroughly and I think I'm gonna take a little screwdriver lift on once oh, okay. so we're gonna lift this spring gently and get 
one side of this slider on that spring and now that we've got one side on the spring we can actually I bet there's a cleverer way to do this yeah we'll slide it from this end and that way we can see the grooves that we want to slip our spring into and we pull the spring back and then it snaps into place all right perfect just slip our needle clamp up on here and the needle clamp should go on pretty easily oh. I'm gonna dab oil on those threads because that all went through and got cleaned up real good in the sonic cleaner which means it doesn't have an, any fuzz or anything on it, but... So if we put our needle clamping screw in, that'll hold that up. And then we can get our dab of oil on our needle bar bracket here and singers are pretty clever in some ways the needle bar thread guide fits into a notch that helps align all this so as I Tighten the screw. That goes into a groove on the front of the clamp and that matches the needle bar. snug that a little bit. I don't want it tight. Okay. Now, this piece here, I don't remember which way around this piece went. But these two holes line up like that, so we're going to go with that. And then the adjustment side of this bracket was on the top. And there's this screw here. see a little indentation right about here for this adjuster slide which makes sense because this piece over here lines up nicely and then 
Grab a rag to rub some of this oil around on these flats here. There we go. And now the tensioner has the spot where it was clamped in place. And so there's the flat where it was clamped. And then this pin fits in that hole. And that lines up all of this so that the scale is on the top. And this spring needs to be up in front of that holder. And then I can reach and get this set screw back in place. And that tensioner should be clean and back in place. So, all right, now I did put this machine back in the cabinet and plug the cords into it so uh, I can run it a little bit, make sure it looks like it's running while we wait because we got to give that JB weld 24 hours to dry. before we uh, put the cover back on. So. My neighbor drove down the alley as soon as I started recording a second ago. So, uh, plugged in, the light comes on, and this is a knee control machine, so I'm just gonna push on that knee controller a little bit. And with that bit of oil and exercise, the zigzag cam is working just fine. And then that's set to straight stitch. And I can move center and then left. Forward and reverse seems to be working, so I just need to wait for that lid to finish uh, the glue, and then um, I'm going to pop this bobbin winder off and get a tire on it. All right, so. Uh, the drive for this 503A is right here, and this is one of the spiral drive vertical motor machines. And to get the bobbin winder tire replaced, we'll just pull this pivot pin up, unscrew that, and that's going to have the spring underneath it. It's got that spring underneath it and then we can pop a new tire on there and get that back in. Uh, these machines, if you are unaware, they have a phenolic gear that drives. So there's a spring under that phenolic gear and that's why the machine wobbles while it's engaged just because the um, phenolic gear has a spring under it to keep it from getting snapped uh, from jerky movements. And you should be able to check this gear by, or that spring, by pulling on the um, hand wheel and seeing it bounce back without the motor moving. So, 
that machine should be good. Like those springs very rarely break, but when they do, you gotta keep an eye out. So I'm gonna find a tire or grab a tire and put this back in in a second. All right, new tire and. Put our spring on here underneath. Make sure that the long leg ends up inside the machine. And then So I had to hold that all together, and then I got the screw started, and now I'm going to make sure the spring is not pinched under the lever here. And it should. And then when you engage it, it presses down onto the drive shaft. Hmm. I guess I will look and see if there's supposed to be a skinnier tire on this machine. That's the standard style tire I've been putting on everything. But it... There is an adjustment here. Let's... certainly wasn't right. Let's Seems pretty good. And then we'll put one tiny dab of oil on the top side. There we go. Perfect. When we lock it in, it is going to drive. And then it should fill and pop out. Beautiful. Hmm. Uh. Okay, seems to drive okay. I was worried that the hand clutch wasn't tightening back up. 